We can now officially begin. Welcome to Holy Trinity for worship on this sixth weekend after Pentecost, this Independence Day weekend. We welcome our friends who are online with us as, those, as well as those who are with us in person. Uh, happy to see some faces I haven't seen for a long while. Uh, just a note that we are able to offer the second element of Holy Communion. So as you come forward, you'll receive the host and then proceed. Please pick up a small empty glass and proceed to the communion assistance. The first will have consecrated wine. The second will have consecrated grape juice. They have pouring lip chalices like cruets, so they will fill your little cup. Please consume the entirety and then leave your uh, empty cup on this table before going back to the pew. Thank you. We have two red roses this evening. Paul and Bobby de Corsia have welcomed another, well, actually, another great grandchild. This one's a great granddaughter. She was born on June 22nd, and her name is Oakley June. Her parents are Zachary Snyers and Montana Della Hunty. The other red rose celebrates the birth of a son to Melissa Barella Lester and her husband Jason. The glad maternal grandparents are Barbara and Vinnie Barella, and the baby's name is Santino Vincent, and he joins big brother Oliver. He was born just this last Monday, June 28th. This evening, we welcome uh, Eric McLaughlin on the piano in the loft. He and Ned are gonna be doing a duet during worship. And as always, we thank Helga also for being with us, our songbird up in the loft. Our office is closed on Monday for the observed holiday. And for those who are interested in the Book of Lost Friends, they did arrive at Booktown this last week. Our worship begins with the prelude, helping us center ourselves in the Lord's presence.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of the stars of night, companion at the evening table, breath over the deep waters. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, we confess that we have sinned against you this day. Some of our sin we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us that we may rest in peace. Amen. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism, you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. When he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are rebellious, are a rebellious house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Word of God, word of life. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to speak or to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wished to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think me better, think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joses and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages, teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. The King's Speech is a movie some of you have probably seen. If you haven't, I recommend it. It's about Queen Elizabeth II's father, George VI. The King's speech isn't about any particular speech King George ever gave. It's rather about his struggle to overcome a speech impediment, a pronounced stammer, stutter. This man, whom family members called Bertie, did not seem cut out to be king. He was shy and reserved and suffered from anxiety. He had no desire to be king and no reason to believe he'd ever become king. His older brother, Edward VIII, was already king until Edward VIII abdicated his throne on December 10, 1936, in order to marry his sweetheart, the American divorcee, Wallace Warfield Simpson. With Harry and Meghan, history seems to be repeating itself a little bit. George VI was a good man and a good king. He was thrust into that royal role just a month after Hitler's minions carried out the Kristallnacht destruction of Jewish property and terrorized the Jews of Germany in November of 1936. George VI became head of the British Empire as Europe was moving inexorably toward World War II. He inspired his people with his courage and his fortitude and his faith during the war, including during the Battle of Britain, over a year's worth of bombing raids against London and other English cities. The king chose not to retreat with his family to Canada, as he had been advised to do. He and the family remained in Buckingham Palace, and one morning while he and the queen were having tea, the palace was bombed. Since it's Independence Day weekend on this side of the pond, I have to mention that George VI was the first English monarch to ever visit the United States of America. Took almost a couple hundred years. He made the trip in 1939. He and the Queen Mum traveled to Washington, D.C., New York City, and Poughkeepsie. Go figure. (laughs) The reason I mention him now is the reference to the thorn in the flesh in the lesson from 2 Corinthians that Mark read. I think that King George VI had at least two thorns in the flesh. 
his inherent shyness, and his lifelong stutter, both of which were significant hurdles for him to clear in the leadership role thrust upon him by fate. I stuttered when I was a child, so I certainly have great empathy for him. Paul writes to the Christians in Corinth about some unidentified problem that he has, some problem that plagues him, torments him, he says. The message rephrasing of the thorn in the flesh passage goes like this. So I wouldn't get a big head. I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What he in fact did was push me to my knees. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. Ah, and once on our knees, we're more apt to remember to pray. We don't know what handicap Paul was talking about. Lots of ink has been spilled wondering what it was. Luther thought it very well may have been a lack of support and open vying for power by other religious leaders who bucked Paul's authority and who liked to point out he wasn't one of the original 12 after all, and he'd never even met the Lord Jesus before Jesus' death and resurrection. Maybe Luther's similar experience of rejection and ridicule sent his thoughts in that direction. Calvin favored the idea that Paul's thorn in the flesh was some kind of spiritual temptation, the temptation to pride or the temptation to just give up. Modern students of scripture tend to think that the thorn in the flesh was some physical disability, illness. Guesses include, but aren't confined to, epilepsy, malarial fevers, eye trouble, migraine headaches, any of which wouldn't really have stopped him from his missionary work, but sure could have made him miserable intermittently. I've suffered from migraines along the way and have often thought, Lord, you know, I could serve you a lot better and get a lot more done if this darn headache would go away. I'm guessing most of us have some thorn in the flesh. We wish we could pray away, and we're quite certain we would do much better without it. Lord, if I didn't have cancer. Lord, if it weren't so painful to walk. Lord, if this cloud of depression would just lift. Lord, if I weren't so darn anxious most of the time. Lord, if I weren't preoccupied with this craving for whatever. So what's your thorn in the flesh? What's your handicap that sure seems like burden instead of blessing? Gut punch instead of gift. Paul prays three times. Lord, I beg you, take out your divine tweezers and remove this thorn in my flesh. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Some folks think the Bible is a dusty, historically time-bound book of ancient history of no practical use with no current application. Wrong. This verse is one of the gems we can carry with us wherever we go, a treasure to strengthen us in times that threaten us. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Honestly, I would prefer that God's power be made perfect in me in strength, not weakness. I don't know about you, but being vulnerable is scary to me. However, the Lord knows that a sense of self-sufficiency does not draw me closer to the Lord. If I convince myself I can manage on my own, I have no need of God. And what's that beautiful beatitude? Blessed are those who know their need of God. Also, blessed are the poor in spirit, those who know their need of God. Here we are celebrating Independence Day, a great reminder for us of how independent we Americans long to be. 
brag about being, and yet the Lord wants us to be completely dependent on him. Paul goes on to say in the paraphrase from the message, at first I didn't think of the handicap as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did that. Now I take my limitations in stride. The limitations that cut me down to size. Abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. George III was king of the British Empire during the Revolutionary War. His descendant, George VI, also a wartime monarch, was a very different man. Humble rather than arrogant, looking to serve rather than be served. His purity of heart showed itself in the selflessness with which he served in a difficult role he never desired, and the dogged persistence with which he worked to overcome the handicap he feared would diminish his ability to project strength for his people in their great time of need. I wonder if he loved and gravitated toward this passage about the thorn in the flesh, especially as he worked on that stutter, if he repeated this mantra for himself, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When we struggle with whatever our handicap is, may we also hear the Lord say, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And in those frustrating and painful moments when our handicap hobbles us, May we remember to just let Christ, our King, take over. Amen. profess our baptismal faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
God of all through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, and for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus. In solidarity with the disempowered, strengthen those who feel faint, give courage to those who fear, and bring wholeness to those in need, especially those afflicted with COVID, the hospitalized, Bernie, Ursula, Carl, Earl, Luis, those in rehab, Gail and Brian, those recovering from surgery, hospitalization or injury, Melissa, Susan, Marty, Ray, Bodo, Cookie, Denny, those anticipating surgery, Joanne, Lorraine, Patty, Shirley and Ted, those undergoing treatments or testings, Carolyn, Jackie, Edwina, Shirley, Felicia, Hank, Pat, Rin, Richard, and Lucille, Rin. For those in hospice, Mary. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us toward freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. We remember with grateful hearts the recently deceased including Tom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. The peace of Christ be with you always.
Let us pray. Holy God, you abide with your creation, and in Jesus Christ, you gather us to your table. As you stayed with your disciples for an evening meal, so now stay with us as we receive these gifts of bread and wine. Open our hearts to share what we have received, the abiding love of Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power, God of light, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna. As the shadows lengthen, we bless you, sheltering God. We glorify you for the endless starlit sky, deep with the mystery of your creative labor through all time and space. We praise you for the fertile earth and for the life its darkness holds and births. Plants of every variety, animals curled in sleep, humankind you shaped by your own hand. Stay with us, for it is evening. Stay with us, for it is evening. Through the night you led your people into freedom. At day's end you rained down manna in the wilderness. At sundown your son brought healing to people in need. In the midday night, when Jesus died on the cross, life came forth for all. Stay with us, for it is evening. Stay with us, for it is evening. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our hearts burn within us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Like a mother hen, hold us close through the coming night. Watch with those who labor. Accompany those who long for peaceful sleep. Welcome those whose waking will be only in you into our deepest night. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, make here the body of Christ in the breaking of the bread, in justice for our broken world, in rest for the weary. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. To you, O God, painter of both night and day, guiding star and healing sun, 
breath of peace and wind of change. Be all glory, all honor, all praise this night unto the coming dawn, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.